Imagine a soldier the size of an insect. The ultimate secret weapon. If you give godlike powers to everyone, it's going to be chaos. So how do we stop him? I know a guy. Scott, I've been watching you for a while. You're different. And I believe everyone deserves a shot at redemption. Do you? Absolutely. My days of breaking into places and stealing stuff are over. What do you want me to do? I want you to break into a place and steal some stuff. Makes sense. Are you ready to become the hero? Now, the suit has power. You have to learn how to control it. And these are your greatest allies. You're kind of cute. Whoa. When you're small, you have superhuman strength. You like a bullet. So you need to know how to punch. You want to show me how to punch? Show me how to punch. That's how you punch. You tried to hide your suit from me. Now, it's gonna blow up in your face and destroy everyone you care about. Scott, get out of there! Did you think you could stop the future? You're just a thief! No. A man, man. I know. It wasn't my idea. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the return of Miserable Movie Mafia. We were away for a week. Yes. Because there really wasn't anything good in theaters. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Unless uh, Minions, but I'm not going to see Minions with a bunch of little children looking like a creepy pedophile <laughs> as we sit there in the theater. As you always <laughs> worry about. <laughs> yeah. So, so uh, as always, I'm Matt, and we got... Fred. And Matt. Matt Hale. Yeah. There you go. I love having Matt Hale on. Yep. He's starting to become a regular fixture. <laughs> <laughs> I try. <laughs> so what do we see today, guys? We saw Ant-Man, which was su- surprisingly... I thought it was going to be the worst Marvel movie yet. Yeah, but it, it surprised it, me. Yeah, surprisingly, it was pretty good. Pretty good. It was better than uh, Avengers 2, I think. Yeah, that's saying so. <laughs> yeah, I, I, think it, I think it was... I think you're right. I think it was probably better than Avengers 2. There was... There was less stuff in this movie that, after I was done watching it, I didn't sit back and think, like, wait, how did that happen? Or what? Like, there was less of that. In Avengers 2, I was like, there were plot holes all over the goddamn place. It was too much stuff shoehorned. It's kind of like Iron Man 2. Yeah. Everything's just shoehorned in there because we got to get it in. And I just didn't like how they, uh, I was disappointed with with Avengers 2, how they portrayed Ultron. They made, he, and the the commercials and stuff, I was getting pumped because he looked so dark. And then, Get to Avengers Two. He was and a comedic he's, villain. He's yeah, a comedic villain. Yep. So, didn't like that. But in this one, it's uh the villain in this one wasn't comedic, but he was also kind of. I didn't. I, I mean, I know you're not supposed to like the villain, but like the actor that portrayed him, I was just like, yeah, it's kind of he's throwaway. Like, he, yeah, he's, he looked like a skinny Vin Diesel. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> he's <laughs> like Vin Diesel's nephew. <laughs> he's on the show now. He's was he's the guy that was uh, on House of Cards. Okay, I didn't get to see any of that yet. But uh, have you heard of the show The Strain? Yeah, on FX. Uh, he's on that now, but they have him wearing this really terrible wig. <laughs> <laughs> like, so he's like bald in real life. And had yeah, a wig he's, on he's bald in real life, and on the show The Strain. On him? It's like they borrowed a wig from John Travolta. It's one of those terrible wigs that you could tell. Is like, oh, oh no. kind of like the one Kevin Spacey was wearing in uh, Superman Returns. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it borrowed one of Lex's wigs. That. It's worse than that. Like I said, it's like you know how John Travolta, like you look at John Travolta and like look who's talking it's from like 1990, and he's got this huge bald spot on the top of his head, and now you look at him now, <laughs> and he's got like this big, <laughs> oh, <God>. flowing hair. <laughs> It, like from that they clearly shaved. Wait, off he had like that Dan Aykroyd kind of bald spot. Oh yeah, just like he had it was like 
bald as shit right here, but if you're looking at him from the front, he keep he kept like that hair there. It, and then, like it looked like that <laughs> hair that's clinging onto the front is clinging on for dear life. Like it's any <laughs> any morning now, he's gonna wake up and it's gonna be like on on his pillow. <laughs> the hair is just there, like looking back. It's like the purge is coming. <laughs> <laughs> that's how he looked in like uh, look who's talking and look who's talking too. You know, from right. the early nineties. And then all of a sudden, like he pops back up and he's got, <laughs> you know, <laughs> this, uh, there's some, like something happened where he has like those bald spots are completely gone. And he's got, you know, the hair off a horse's ass. Right. You know, on his head. <laughs> Scientology does that too. Yeah. I, I guess. I think. So I remember going into this when, uh, it was announced. A lot of people were upset because Ant-Man wasn't Hank Pym. Mm -hmm. But what you find out when you go to see the movie that Hank Pym is actually Michael Douglas's character. Yeah. Which I thought was kind of cool, because they still, like, put him in it, because it's like, yeah, the technology's here, it's not the guy who just robs from everybody knows how to make himself small. Right. You know? So, I thought that was pretty cool. Well, they fit it in nicely to the rest of uh, the story arcs that are coming into um, the next round yeah. of Marvel movies. And Michael yeah. Douglas did a fantastic fucking job in this movie. Well, I think that he was the best actor in the whole thing. I think. Consider, did he have throat cancer too? Yeah. yeah. He, like, well, I mean, it sounded like from, he had it too. No, but I'm just saying, like he, he, he bounced back from something. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's crazy. And actually, he looked pretty damn good. Well, yeah, his, his life is good. Look who he's married to. He's married to Catherine. <laughs> I knew that was coming up. <laughs> and uh, I knew it. If you were going home every day, <laughs> if you were going, if I was going home to Catherine Zeta Jones every night, I wouldn't, I'm just sure the as hell not going to let some throat cancer slow me down. Just the thought of who you're going <laughs> yeah. home to would cure your yeah. throat cancer. I've got to beat this doctor. I'm going home to have sex with Catherine Zeta Jones. I can't, I can't. <laughs> that doctor's like, we got to save this man now. <laughs> yeah. So it's, uh, but yeah, they did a real solid job of explaining why it's not Hank Pym. It was, you know, as a comic book fan, I bought it. Yeah. So I really liked it. I mean, there were, of course, as with every Marvel movie you can watch, you can almost kind of predict how it's going to go. Because mm -hmm. there are certain, like, things they brought up, like, they're, like, going, like, subatomic or whatever. And I'm like, well, of course, we're going to we're gonna see that at some point in time. And it's going to be, like, the whole, like, i got to risk myself to save everybody, so i got to do this, which is risky. Yeah. But then, of course, you know, it's like, well, they're not going to... Just kill him because Civil War and Avengers three and <laughs> like I'm surprised it was the movie was as good as it, as it was, um, basically because of all the trouble they went through in pre production and making the movie. Yeah, they've had they had directors right walk away from the script. They uh, had multiple rewrites done. They had writers walk away from it. So it went through hell to get made. And it's not a movie that looks like it went through a ton of re rewrites. It no. was very smooth. It was paced very well. You know, it wasn't like jump cutty shit where it's just like we're talking about this and then the next minute we're in this place and he's got the the MacGuffin, yeah. <laughs> and then he's back actually to phase. like writing wise. This is probably one of the more solid Marvel movies. Like I think I'd the first Iron like, Man, yeah. I think Winter Soldier and this are are, are some of the best yeah. writing they've had. See, I, like to me, the first Iron Man I think is still their most solid movie that Marvel's done, mm -hmm. and then. uh Winter Soldier was a, was pretty good, and I think Guardians was done very well. Yeah, I was a fan of Guardians. For, yeah. for it being, like, basically almost like C-list comic book characters, like, not many people knew who the Guardians were. They made now it they a movie where people were like, yeah, these guys are great. Even though it's not the original group of the Guardians, it was, you know, they still made a really good movie off of it. I like, I'll, I mean, I like every Marvel movie. I think they're all good. Even Iron Man 2. I liked Iron Man 2. Uh, well, <laughs> <laughs> I like Iron Man three as well. I mean, they all have. They well, all I have like their... Iron Man three, but oh, I've two... I have When we were talking about Jurassic World, and you were like that the the one brother, yeah, the younger brother. You're like, what the fuck else was he in? He was the kid in Iron Man three. Yeah, he was. Oh, the one who. All right. <laughs> yeah, he was. <laughs> I pieced that together the other day. I was like, I gotta tell Fred. He'll be he'll be tickle pink. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I like they all. There are certain ones that I like more than others, but I thoroughly enjoy all i think marvel's yeah, like, doing an excellent even at job. the worst it's still like entertaining to watch yeah it's I, I still enjoy all of them and i like how they do an excellent job of intertwining all the universes including the, um the shitty television shows that they have yeah um uh, the one thing marvel can't get right that dc um does a slightly better job at is the television yeah, well, did television you see aspect. daredevil yet yep daredevil's good i don't but i i mean i don't count that as network tv that's 
Yeah, well, I, I think I think that's why Daredevil's good because they're on a they're on a platform where they can do more with it, and it's part of their Marvel Knights quote yeah. unquote series. And I don't think uh, Disney and ABC and stuff um, look over. Yeah, they don't want them as much as well. Yeah, because Knights was more like a darker, yeah, like more in your face version of the stories that were going on and like Disney don't want that. Yeah. <laughs> like, I think Disney the, the reps at Disney are like, "Oh, are you going to do something with this uh Daredevil property we ha- we own? All right, yeah, whatever. Go ahead. Uh on next week's Agents of Shield, we want uh, you know, the Chinese agent to <laughs> do an epic karate chop and fight an army of cyborg rats or something <laughs> like ridiculously stupid like that. And it's just fucking terrible. And then we want Coulson to show up with a big gun and yeah. go, I wonder what this is for. Yeah. I just, picture, <laughs> just like that episode of South Park with the awesome old rabbit with those execs and they're going like, yeah, 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 oh, yeah. Like, like, stuff like I just picture them in ABC going like, we're going to take the most boring part of the Avengers movies, the guys in the background wearing shoot, suits, the, the shield agents, and we're going to give them their own show. Oh, people will love that. Yeah, yeah, let's do that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's funny. We just talked about how intertwined all the movies and stuff are. And and I was reading somewhere where they knew that the whole downfall of S.H.I.E.L.D. was going to happen. So mm-hmm. the question still begs, why make a TV show based on something that you know you're going to eradicate eventually down the line? Because some, <laughs> some... Because then, see, that's how they, they really wisely intertwine everything. Because they're like, well, it's going to eradicate. So if it's bad... We already have it written out. We're gonna end it. Yeah, and what's even worse? <laughs> what's even worse than Agents of Shield is uh, that uh, Agent Peggy Carter or Agent Carter show. Oh, the Captain America's C- wife. Yeah, from in the fifties, thirties, thirties, and forties. Yeah, because yeah. what they do is they take um, Shield, which is boring, and they say let's transport it back to the forties. So, <laughs> with that one character that had ten minutes of screen time. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I think they made it because they were sitting around and saying, like, you know, Avengers and Marvel's making so much money. We got to do a Marvel show. Uh, let's, that, that guy, Agent Coulson, is, is kind of funny in the Avengers movie. Let's give him his own show. Yeah. Maybe they kill, uh, yeah, I don't know. It's just, it's just, <laughs> it's just know. a bad idea all the way around. It's like, here's a character you killed off. Yep. On purpose. Here's a here's an organization you're going to kill off on purpose, and yet yep. you're still going to have a whole show wrapped. <laughs> and then it gets green with it. And, and honestly, to, if you look at it, the show that it's going to become with the Inhumans is just as bad. Like yeah, there's yeah. a property that could be something so much more, like a live action X Men TV show. Yeah, and they're going yeah. to ruin it. I wish they would do that with X Men. But well, they they're, I heard they're working on it. Fox is with their property, but it's real tricky because. See, they, they Fox owns make it a all reboot. the movie rights and all that stuff, but not necessarily the TV rights. Yeah. But they worked it out with Spider-Man, where now they have Spider-Man. Yeah. Marvel's overseeing Spider-Man. Even though Sony makes money off it, Marvel's overseeing the creative process with Spider-Man. And, that was and the, you'll probably get better movies just Well, that because. was the smartest thing Sony could have done. They'd be like, we'll just let you handle it, and we'll rake in the dough. Yeah, I mean, that's, <laughs> why doesn't 20th Century Fox do the same thing? Because they're getting a little out of, out of control with their... Uh, well, yeah, when you show me that picture of what Apocalypse is going to look like... Hey, he looks like he looks like uh, Grimace went to the gym, got muscular, and started fucking men. That's what he <laughs> looks like. It's, he kind of looks like Kelsey Grammer as the Beast if you shaved his head and put him in Egyptian garbs. Well, yeah. I mean, it's, <laughs> well, that's what I kept thinking to myself. Like, how many more characters with blue skin and blue faces can you have? Like, I don't know. Like, the, at least the comic book, you, you know, purple or gray. I was thinking or, that in the Guardians, <laughs> it's like, how many blue, pink, and green people are there going to be in this movie? Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, it's... The X Men franchise. I'm not a fan of Brian Singer's uh, X Men. I'm not a fan of Brian Singer, except for The Usual Suspects. But I mean, I think he did a good job of casting. I think I buy Hugh Jackman as Wolverine. But overall, the movies. I'm, every time I see the movies, with the exception of maybe X Men Two, that um, was my favorite one yeah. out of the whole of them too. Even like First Class and this uh, Days of the Future Past. I'm just kind of like, eh. I think you've been doing so much more with this. Like I'm like, uh eh. Yeah, I mean, Michael Fassbender does a decent magnet. Well, yeah, his casting and, is, is excellent. Yeah. I will praise his casting up and down. He does an excellent job of casting the people of the mutants. It's the story and stuff that I'm always yeah. like, nah, like, why is, I mean, I like Peter Dinklage, but why is he Bolivar Trask? I don't recall Bolivar Trask ever being... Two uh, foot tall? <laughs> yeah, a midget. It's, it's just because he's, he's hot midget? right now. Or, yeah, he... he yeah. Or is that derogatory? No, that's fine. Okay. Midget. <laughs> like, I, don't I mean, I'm not exactly sure <laughs> what the PC term is, but... 
I mean, you can Google <laughs> well, it. Know, uh, <laughs> it's funny, he, he'll ask you that, but what he said about Grimace being an uh, <laughs> Grimace going to the gym, ass fucking man. So, <laughs> well, you know. <laughs> You gotta not pick, you gotta anything. pick and choose your battles, Mister. Yeah. Not, <laughs> not that there's anything wrong with that. I'm just saying he looks, you know, like. So, right. <laughs> so Fred and I had a pretty uh, favorite part of this movie, and it there was nothing that went on in this scene except for just Michael Douglas screaming. Yeah, and then at the same time. Him and I simultaneously went back to Congo. Yeah, the did you get the diamond? You do it a lot better than me. <laughs> well, there's just there. He, he's uh. Michael, like Hank Pym, Michael Douglas's character is arguing with his daughter because his daughter wants to wear the Ant Man suit and infiltrate the uh, corporation that they're trying to take down because that's the guy who made the Yellow Jacket suit, mm-hmm. and they don't want anybody getting a hold of this technology. So they're arguing back and forth, and then out of nowhere, like Douglas is just like, "No, you can't do it. No, you can't do it." He's all calm, and then no, <laughs> <laughs> and that just took me back to like, "God damn it!" <laughs> Did you get the diamond? <laughs> that the best part. That's up there, top ten movie moments ever, where they just where he just snaps. I mean, it makes sense because in the comic book, doesn't Pim go nuts? Like the suit makes him go nuts, right? Yeah, he's overexposed to it yeah. too much, and he goes crazy. He starts getting mad at everybody, and which they they hint at in this. They hint at in this. Yeah, because he's like, well, well, why don't you put it on? He was a bad guy. Yeah, yeah, Pim was a bad guy at points in time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and there's a part they say, like, well, why don't you put it on and do it? I'm obviously not the right guy. And he's like, I can't. Yeah. It, it, it broke me. I can't do it anymore. So, yeah, I mean, that, that, that well, part I Well, played liked. into the villain, too, which was really nice, you know? Yeah, because he started, like, he was going to shoot him. He was going to, sh- the villain was going to shoot him, yeah. which was his mentor. And that's what his daughter's like, you don't want to do this. You know, it's just the, it's the, it's the, the particles. particles. It's messing with your brain. Now, is that in the, co- I'm not familiar with Yellow Jacket. In the comic book, is that how. See, I'm I'm shady on his I was say, background I don't, I, I as well. I can tell you one thing: I don't think there's anybody in this room that's an avid Ant Man reader. No, I, <laughs> no, I mean, I I wasn't. I think I have one issue of like the new Ant Man. Yeah, I I do too. Yeah, and that's it. But it makes you interested in going back. And yeah, taking I mean, a I wouldn't mind finding it. out how the Yellow Jacket. It, it comes makes this proper again. The same way with Guardians. All now look like stuff that's been in the movies because, like, they re they started putting out more Guardians comics after that movie, and it's all that team-up. And they look exactly like they did in the movie. So, like, Hawkeye looks like... Jimmy yeah, so Renner. you have, like, young readers that are like, I want Guardians comics, and they go looking through, like, you know, long boxes of old stuff, and they're like, who the hell are these guys? This isn't the Guardians. And it's yeah. like, well, that that was the first, actually. For a movie, they can go to the comic books and say, you know... Yeah, that's why you call this yeah. a cinematic universe. Yeah. It's not supposed to be the comic universe. Now they're gonna... Now what are they gonna go to... Because uh, everyone here knows this. The people in Hollywood, they're not that bright. They're not, uh, when it comes to creativity. Right, yeah. They're not good with it. They, they just don't have it. They sit around eating eating tofu and drinking lattes and, talk, <laughs> and, and you know, talking about themselves nonstop and, you know, talking about this, that, and the other thing. Can you just say that? I'm just picturing somebody not even baking the tofu. <laughs> they just open the wet package and just shove it into their mouth well, in a whole block. Yeah, they're eating all this, they're eating, like, this hippie vegan, this hippie vegan crap, sitting around drinking some um, thing that, you know, thing from a coffee shop that's not even a real cup of coffee. <laughs> Again, I've said this before, coffee it, it's is... It's a black cup of coffee <laughs> and a cigarette. That's yes. how you drink coffee. A black cup of coffee and a cigarette. <laughs> and a steak. And if you do all three at and once... steak! Steak and eggs in the morning. Steak, eggs... <laughs> Steak, eggs. Man, you should have been on the uh, crew of Twister then. <laughs> yeah. Steak, Sounds eggs. like a Las Vegas breakfast. <laughs> That's right. Steak, <laughs> eggs, black coffee, and a cigarette. That's right. <laughs> Two or three cigarettes. They bring the cigarette, like, lit to you on a bread plate. Put yeah. that <laughs> Or Scrapple. Scrapple's all right, too. You can eat Scrapple. Oh. I love Scrapple. <laughs> <laughs> Grapple. I heard somewhere someone left it in the microwave too long. It was just a ball of burned up hair. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I don't know if that's accurate. Well, anyway, back to the movie. Yeah, back to Ant Man. <laughs> but whether they're not that creative, so obviously they're going to go to the, they go to the comic books that pick things out that they need to. Now, what are they going to do when there's nothing there in the comic books but just the same? Well, hopefully we'll be dead and going. Hopefully <laughs> they will just use the story for I mean, the comic books. I'm, I'm <laughs> interested that they're starting to kind of get a little bit deeper and get more some of the obscure characters, but 
the longevity of what you're going to be able to make off of like Doctor Strange's and you know some mm-hmm. of these other. It's just like it's only going to be able to go for so far, and then people aren't going to really care anymore. I mean, like the movies are good, but people are starting to get to a point where they're like, I want to see more than just superhero movies in my summer movie lineups. Yeah, well, I, I mean that's that. going to be, but the nice thing, that same thing, what Marvel does is like each movie is themed differently. Like this was like a heist movie. Like yeah, you this know, is true. Um, yeah. The last. This uh, is going to be a better Mission Impossible movie than Mission Impossible. Oh, Mission Impossible! Yeah, I'm so sick of Tom Cruise. <laughs> well, so like Winter Soldier is what? Like a like a political thriller? Would yeah, you say? that's a political. I would say that's a political. Yeah, thriller. that was a, that was well that, done. I mean, there that. was obviously action in there. And I, I hope they do the Civil War thing correctly because I really like the idea. I think it plays the uh, um, oh, politics it's, today. It's not going to be like the comic at all. I, actually, that would big th- government and. Where you have people who want like I, the government in in every aspect of your life, and I mean, then you if, have people who are like, "No, give me my freedom. I'm willing to." If I, they do that, that's great. But I mean, they're not going to kill Captain America. I know. Well, that. I don't know. Yeah, but you think? Well, about he died it. after the Civil War because the end of Civil War. Well, is he when, died in the trials preceding, yeah, post Civil War for what he did during the Civil well, War. Well, he might, he may because he. I think his, name? his contracts like, are soon yeah. up, and you know, if you want to know. You know, I, what I think they're going to end up doing is exactly like they did in the comic book. Spoiler for anybody that, that hasn't read into those ones is I think they're going to quote unquote kill off Captain America. And make Bucky. Bucky Barnes will be Captain America just like he was in the comic books. And then when Infinity Wars comes, then Captain America will come back. And then that way they have the entire team, including, and then it fits into their contracts as well. One thing I'll say is I don't like, I don't want to see the Avenger B team. Be in an Avenger movie. Oh, would that be? Oh. I guess that would be West Coast then. Yeah, Avengers of the West like, Coast. Yeah, I don't know what they're no because remember their base was in New York, upstate New York. Oh yeah, that's true. <laughs> they just, yeah, that doesn't make any sense. I like then. I like the real Avengers team. I don't like the like the West Coast Avengers, like the Avenger B team, where it's gonna be like Falcon and Quicksilver, even though he's dead. So I guess spoiler alert. If you haven't seen it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, it's just well, we like, ruined that in our Avengers two no, review. Yeah, you're, you're right. It is going to be really weird because I don't like the lineup for the new Avengers. You know, the Vision. Okay, great. Falcon. Okay, great. Uh, the he's Scarlet like, Witch. Um, well, it's like the okay. Vision's like Marvel Superman without. with more oh, yeah. weak with autism. Yeah, he's with Marvel. Su- but he's got autism. He's like. <laughs> Has no social skills whatsoever. Yes, I understand he's a robot, but still, even Arnold smiled in Terminator Genesis. <laughs> God damn it! <laughs> Great movie. God though. damn it! <laughs> Great plug. <laughs> Great plug for a terrible movie. <laughs> but, um, I firmly stand behind. That. I know. I know. I, I read through most of your seven-page review. <laughs> My, my strong defense. Was there, was there a definitive argument? Oh, he, he had videos. And, oh, he, he like did his homework on the Yeah, he yeah, like went back in time. And, like, yeah. <laughs> I had clips of like James Cameron praising the movie, and then I was like, I was like, YouTube critics who hate this movie just like to smell their own farts. And I had like a video of like South Park, yeah. and all like <gasps> like farting and smelling. Their if own any of you out there that listens to this have not read any of his reviews, I go and read the Terminator Genesis one. It is just, it's great. You'll be like, <laughs> you'll feel gem. like, yeah, you'll be like, man, I wish I could get this hardbound and put on my bookshelf somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> it's, oh, uh, man. But yeah, I, I, I know the, they need. I don't know where were we? We were talking about what. Vision having autism. <laughs> oh, no, it's like, I, I think just the distaste for this next group of Avengers. I, I just I don't have any like the Falcon. Falcon is weak. Falcon was like a like a C player, and yeah, like, he got the, beat up by Ant Man in this movie. Well, yeah, <laughs> but I'm talking about in the comic books. Falcon was like a C like a C player. Like yeah, he, he was like the Cassie much. Griffin of the comic book world. <laughs> <laughs> God damn it! Oh, Why man, is he playing funny. such a prominent part? Uh, I well. Because no one else has a contract left. <laughs> yeah, that's like, pretty much. Well, Chris Evans is gonna he'll he'll be running back to them begging for a contract once he goes the way the same route that uh Michael Keaton did after he turned down Batman after Batman Returns. Yeah. Because C- Chris Evans is saying, "Well, I'm not gonna renew my contract because I want to go direct." No, you stink at directing. You do what you do best. Look at every other movie he was in before Captain America. They all stunk. Every yeah. single one of them. He 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 was Johnny Blaze or Storm. Yes. Johnny Storm. <laughs> I always Johnny Blaze. Yeah, that's Ghost Rider. Yeah. I, I always the, mix those two up because I'm like, why is not Johnny Blaze the guy who is on fire? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but, like, 
But look, but look what else he was in. Well, he was in that. Uh, what else was he in besides? Well, he was, Pierre, sir, that he was, was in that right. not another tier team movie. Yeah, he was in not another team movie offering to get. Uh, with uh, Lacey Chabert, yeah, I've seen Snowpiercer. That's actually not too bad. That's based on a comic book. But that was current. Yeah, that was comic books. <laughs> he, he was in another comic book one too with uh, Jeffrey Dean Morgan, the guy who played the comedian in The Watchmen. Oh, oh uh, I gotta look this up now. <laughs> that's gonna annoy you mm-hmm. all night. <laughs> He's. But yeah. anyway, go but on. No, I know so, what you mean. Well, let's just get. To, I mean, obviously, yeah, you're right. Chris Evans really doesn't have because he's quite a lucrative career. He stinks. He got fame. He, he, his career became lucrative because he played uh, Captain America. Captain America is the sole reason why his career is lucrative. Once he throws that away, guess what? He's going to be back starring in not another team movie three or four. Nobody's <laughs> going to pick him up as a fucking director. He's going to make some weird artsy house bullshit movie with a bunch of uh, gay cowboys sitting around eating pudding or something like that. And that's going to be <laughs> that's going to be his foray. His I got your South Park <laughs> reference in there. His foray into. <laughs> <laughs> into the, the world of directing, it's going to be terrible. Nobody's going to want to see it, and he's going to, you know, come crawling back to Marvel, begging them to let him be Captain America again. I have to ask this question though, because I'm having a hard time thinking of an answer to it. But is there anything in Ant Man that you guys didn't like? I didn't like how the villain died. Okay, yeah, I can get with you on that one because it was just kind of like it was. They have Ant-Man like a th- four minute fight. If even that, and it's just like, poof. Yep. <laughs> he yeah. dies. I mean, like, I haven't seen a villain die so suddenly than, like, Bane in <laughs> Dark, Dark Knight Rises. Yeah. <laughs> we, I don't know. I mean, it was solid all the way around. Like, um, like I, I think it had one of the better villains. Same thing, like, because it wasn't a tacky villain. Yeah. Kind of like Jeff Bridges in the first Iron Man. He That's played true. It pretty, that he was... played it pretty straight. It was, it yeah. was pretty good. I liked it. I um, could have done with a little bit less of his uh, friends. Oh, I thought you meant maybe like the training. Oh, the, the, the you're talking about relief. Michael Piana, the, the Spanish guy. He drives me insane. No, I mean, like, the parts that they did were kind of funny, but at the same time, I'm like, you're one note character, though. Yeah. Like, if they bring you back for anything else, it's just like, why? You you just relief. I I don't yeah. like. I, I thought that was a downside. I think you're right with the, with the with the three thief friends he has. Yeah. Uh, the the one that really annoyed me is Michael. I think his name is Michael Piana or something like that. Um, the Spanish one. He drives me insane yeah. in every movie, and he stinks. <laughs> he absolutely stinks, and he, it, he's in it for the comic relief in this one, and it's. You don't need him. Paul Rudd's enough comic relief as it is. Right? And actually, Paul Rudd played it pretty straight in this as well. Yeah, he did fine. I just, like, when he when he said, oh, you know, when they found out that the guy was going to make the security better and all this, like, out of nowhere, and they're like, well, we need, we're going to need more guys now. And it was just like, I got guys. And it's like his, those three friends that are like whack jobs. And I'm like, yeah. so you're telling me, Michael Douglas being Hank Pym, who did all these... Secret, Secret jobs missions. for, like, S.H.I.E.L.D. and it. he doesn't know anybody else yeah. that he can call upon to come and help him out with this job. Right. <laughs> well, exactly. like, what's Nick Fury doing? Is he broke now because he bought a new fucking, like, aircraft carrier to help out Cap? Well, he, yeah, well, yeah. It's, yeah I, see, I definitely see where you're going. It's kind of like... Uh, it's like, yeah, it's like, hey, Nick, uh, yeah, Hydra just bought this stuff. You might want to... We need some help. I, and I think they made the reference to... Uh, you know the one guy, Michael Piana's character, being in jail because he stole a sm- uh, what was a smoothie machine or something. Yeah, like that? two yeah. smoothie machines. Yeah, I bought uh, two. So he couldn't <laughs> even two. properly steal two smoothie machines. I, every time I go into Walmart, I see people walk uh, properly stealing things bigger than smoothie machines when they're running out the door. <laughs> <laughs> so if he could, <laughs> this is true. <laughs> go to a Walmart on a Black Friday. <laughs> Take a look there. There's people stealing things a lot bigger I, than smoothie machines. I will never go to a Walmart on Black Friday. Yeah, that's a death wish right there. I, I bunker down in my house on Black Friday like it's a fucking zombie apocalypse is happening. Yeah, I, <laughs> yeah. won't catch me anywhere on a Black Friday. <laughs> and, and the weird thing is the only... I, I kind of sat back and I was thinking to myself, my God, this is like... This is so fantasy. It's crazy. Like, you know, riding ants around and like talking to them, like creating an army. But I'm thinking... Who am I to question this? They're talking. There's a talking raccoon in this universe. Yeah, that's what I mean. At this rate, like Marvel's just like fuck it, give him whatever. (laughs) You know the one part where he's trying to tell the one guy the the guy who's you know slapping skins with his ex wife 
Um, <laughs> <laughs> when he's trying to tell him that he's like, you know, that, you know, I'm, I, I can train and stuff. And he's like, he's like, shut up. You expect me to believe that? Yeah, you're in a universe where uh, aliens have invaded New York, where <laughs> yeah. the Avengers have just dropped a whole Eastern European city down. <laughs> Which they make a reference to. Yeah. Well, they do, but he, you got a good point. It's like, that shit happens. Yeah. And other people in the world just like, it's like it never even happened to them. Yeah. It's just like, what do you mean you shrink? It's yeah. not like I just saw a fucking automatonic robot come yeah. to life and try to wipe out, like, a small country. <laughs> yeah, it's not like I turn on uh, Fox News and see, uh, you know, a, a fucking Norse god come down from <laughs> yeah, Asgard true. and uh, fly around with this magical hammer. <laughs> you expect me to think you shrink? <laughs> <laughs> it's... That's yeah. true. Uh, but, but, yeah, because he does, he references that. It's like, oh, they're busy trying to stop small countries becoming meteors and... yeah. It's like, well, it kind of made me wonder too. I'm like, so what time is this taking place during when that happened? Well, it would be right after. Yeah, it would have had to have been after. They do it um, all because they... of the second after credits. The uh, extra yeah, hidden okay, scene. that's true. So there was a second one in Avengers. No, no, I'm talking about no, the in one this in this movie. Movie. Oh, yeah. this one. Do you want to spoil that for everyone or now? Well, basically, well, how about Cap... spoiler? Spoiler! Spoiler! Spoiler alert to the spoiler alert. Yeah. Cap and uh, Hulk, Falcon. Uh, Falcon. I keep wanting to call him the Hulk, but that's fucking DC. <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't think there was a that's black the Hulk. other. <laughs> yeah, there was a black Hulk. Yeah, like a black guy that was a, a Hulk. black guy that was a Hulk. Yeah, not Hulk. Hawk. Oh, oh. <laughs> the, the oh. fucking bird, not not not, <laughs> not, a, not a not a rage monster. <laughs> but yeah, so Cap and the Falcon are in like a warehouse looking yeah. thing. And they're like, what are we going to do about hit this guy? And then the camera turns over and Bucky's there. Yeah, they got his arm in a vice. And got, camera, yeah. His mechanical arm in a vice. So. So then Which is like, kind of odd in and of itself. He was yeah. ripping doors off of Fords. <laughs> like, yeah. you know, in two yeah. movies before this. <laughs> the people's power is, like, it fluctuates so much in these movies. Because yeah. that's well, what, like, in the second, in the in Avengers 2, I was like, what happened to the Hulk's, like, super strength? Because, like, in the first one, he's, like, tearing the fucking, like, floating ship apart, like, the shield thing. He's just running through the hallways. They're blowing apart. He's ripping it to shreds. And yeah. then, like, he can't beat up the Hulkbuster armor in the second one. <laughs> yeah. It's... I'm like, he decimates an entire building just by punching him down through it. And he can't rip the fucking faceplate off and just be like, poof, dead. <laughs> yeah, it's... I... Yeah, you guys... Well, there's superhero movies too. You gotta suspend this. I, I, I understand. I understand. <laughs> but, I mean, I'm watching a movie with a raccoon and a guy who yeah. fucking shrinks. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, back to what you said earlier about people not wanting to see a summer filled with nothing but superhero movies. Yeah. I 100% agree. They gotta start. I wanna see two superhero movies a year. One, one during the summer, one during the winter. Well, and like, whatever happened to getting like a, I know this is going way off topic, but whatever happened to just getting a smart sci-fi movie anymore? Well, you're getting Prometheus too. Come March. I said, what happened to getting a smart sci-fi movie? <laughs> Prometheus was the dumbest goddamn sci-fi I movie. I kind of enjoyed Prometheus. Oh, come on. That wasn't that No, bad. no, no. When you, you see it together. When you, when you, I know, but when you, when you gotta say, oh, come on, you know it's bad. <laughs> you just like it because you're like, aliens was good. <laughs> I like Ridley Scott. I think Ridley Scott doesn't, I, I liked Prometheus. You know Do what? I think it was great. I, I, I would have loved Prometheus 90% more if in the end somebody just ran left or right away from the ship. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think, I, no, I think what pissed a lot of people off with that movie, it was that they tried to skirt too much around the alien franchise. Like, oh, well, it's a ship that falls and crashes in the same position that one does in the other movie, but this isn't the same planet, and that's not the same yeah, alien. And there just this... happens to be alien yeah. sculptures <laughs> all over the fucking walls in the caves that they find. Yeah, yeah. So I think they try to skirt that way too much. Like, I understand maybe having some type of separation, but it was like, like if you're going to do that, then just completely separate the two. Don't even give us like yeah. the, the hint that there is even anything close to it. But, yeah, yeah going back to that, I totally agree. I'd like to... I'd like to get one big summer event and then something around in the winter to hold me over. Yeah. And then that'd be it. That's it. Because now now it's trickling in like April is starting to become a hot month to bring new movies out. Mm-hmm. Because like, because Winter Soldier made $95 million its opening weekend. They're like, oh, well, we can just throw this shit out anywhere now. Yeah. 
And it's like, I don't really want my summer movie season starting in April. <laughs> like, well, with it, with the slate of films coming up, do you think there's any that, that are going to not do well? Like, probably the new Thor movie. Just because none of the them have really... Two, yeah, the last we're talking just really. comic book movies? No, let's just say Marvel, they're slated at all. Like, I don't know... I don't think the Inhumans will do that well. Probably well, not. if they do it like they did the TV show, like they're... Well, they're yeah, already, you got a point there. See, I think that's what they're doing now. They're, they're, they're ruining that franchise before it even takes off. Now, if it had just been the movie, and then maybe a slight introduction into the TV realm, maybe, but now I think they, they've gonna, they're gonna... Yeah, they planted the seeds for the Inhumans. Well, the Inhumans are on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Yeah. And it's kind right. of really tacky and shitty. Yeah, it's tacky. I, um, I just... I don't. I still don't really know how I feel about the Doctor Strange movie. I never really read much of Doctor See, I Strange, think that one's but gonna be I think pretty good. I don't know. I mean, I like that. You know, now Marvel's going to also have like the supernatural in there as well. But yeah. I think I think you watch though. I, I bet you there's going to be some kind of cosmic twist to it. I think the casting they're doing for that. Well, gonna... you know, I hope because since Fox is starting to talk a little bit with Marvel, I'd like to start seeing. You know, the mutant side of the universe start making its way over because it's like yeah. they are a part of all this. Yeah, and they, they're trying to like explain them away with this whole inhuman thing. But one of the, one of my favorite storylines in comic books, besides the Civil War, is the A, A versus X storyline, the Avengers. Yeah, that was a good one. Yeah. Where, uh, where Cyclops kills Professor X and. Yeah. It's, you know, I, I'd love to see. Sorry about that. <laughs> it's all right. We're not professional uh, here. <laughs> probably, probably some highly unattractive, yep, highly unattractive woman hitting me up on... But anyway. <laughs> if you want to date Fred, plenty of fish. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it's... He's got a picture of him in a smoking jacket. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> if I not, would... we're taking that picture. <laughs> yeah. I'd be willing to do it. <laughs> but yeah, it's... They're missing out on all this stuff. X-Men plays a huge part in the Marvel. You know, I mean, think about it. The, it's, it's, X-Men was the first thing I started reading yeah. before I got into Spider-Man. That's got to be, like, the three big um, things that make money for Marvel are X-Men, Spider-Man, well, and the Avengers. Used, used to be Spider-Man. <laughs> They've kind of ruined Spider-Man, have they? Well, Sony, dis- like, Sony ruined Spider-Man. Amazing well, Spider-Man like the too. comic books, though, are really good. Though. Yeah. Well, they've kind of ruined the Spider-Man comic book when they put Dr. Octopus's brain inside Peter Parker's body. Yeah, that was... Yeah, that's yeah. kind of... Yeah, but you can always reboot that. <laughs> <laughs> well, they are, and I, I know what's coming, and I'm not sure if I really care for it. But what's, what's coming? Well, in the rumor mill, Spider-Man is going to be. I think he's in like Tokyo now or something, and he's like Iron Man's bodyguard. Done. <laughs> <laughs> Why can't you just keep it, Peter Parker? I don't need because I've seen him. pictures of it. He's got like his emblems on it, and it's like green lit in the background, and his eyes glow green. You know, I'm so sick of, <laughs> I'm so sick and tired of this. And let, let me just say this: There's a writer in comic book. If you follow comic books, you know who this guy is. His name is Brian Michael Bendis. He's one of the best, I think. You think he's the best? Well, I I've read some of his stuff. It's good. Brian some Michael Bendis is the guy who said that uh, anyone who wants Peter Parker to be white is a racist and should never read comic books. Oh, again. I didn't know he said that. Yeah. Well, I might retract my statement. <laughs> Brian Michael Bendis is the guy responsible behind Ultimate X Men. Oh. And Ultimate Spider-Man. Oh. And oh. he's actually done a lot of bad stuff. That's why I want to say, fuck you, Brian Michael Bendis. <laughs> this is Fred saying, fuck you. I hope you get the Ebola virus and you wither <laughs> away to nothing. Ebola virus? You shit out your innards after the Ebola virus and you wither away to nothing. Matt, what do See, you I did not know. <laughs> I did not know he said that. Holy yeah. crap. Yeah, he says a lot of stuff like that. He said, oh, wow. Because people were like, why... Because um, something came out, Sony had had kept it, kind of told Marvel that, look, we'll let you use Spider-Man, but there's certain rules you have to follow. It has to be Peter Parker, he has to be, you know, he has to be white, or something along those lines, mm-hmm. uh, to keep it with the original Spider-Man, because that's what people want to see. Which is, alright, I can understand that. Uh, that's right. not being racist. That's, the character was white. Right, all right? Peter Parker Just be- was a white guy. Yeah, yeah. alright. Brian Michael Bendis said, well... Anyone who wants to see Peter Parker be white is is a ra- is a racist, and they shouldn't read comic books at all. Jesus! If Brian Michael Bendis gets his way, we'll get a Filipino transgender as Spider Man, 
uh, in in the reboot after the Secret Wars. <laughs> It's just keep Spider- Peter Parker, Sp- Peter Parker, Spider Pool Boy. <laughs> <laughs> just keep him. I mean, it's not racist. Black Panther is a great superhero. He's black. Yeah. War Machine's black. I think Spawn Spawn black. Spawn's black. Yeah, I was gonna say Spawn. Yeah, one of, one of I the love Spawn in comics. Green Lantern was black at a point in time. Yeah, yeah. He was that, actually John Stewart. Right? Luke Cage. Yeah, that one. Luke Cage is black. Yeah, Luke Cage is awesome. There's tons of. There's tons of black, oriental, Spanish, you know, super- Well, and I'll even go into it when they wrote the new Ultimate Spider-Man line and it was Miles Morales and he's black. He's, the books were fine. Yeah. That's. He was a young black kid that grew up in the uh, inner city and it was fine. The, it was still good. Yeah, Brian Michael Bendis is a, is a turd. I just don't like, <laughs> I don't like him. <laughs> but anyway, Matt. So yeah, at, back to Ant-Man. <laughs> yeah. What do you give? What do you give Ant Man? Oh, I give it a solid uh, nine point five out of ten. Okay, Matt, I say like an eight, eight point five. I'm gonna go with the eight as well. I'm always very generous. Yeah, you are, <laughs> unless it's Terminator. Genesis. Yeah, unless it's Terminator. Genesis. <laughs> then I'm just like zero. <laughs> Fuck this movie. <laughs> but yeah, I, I thought it, I thought it was a good movie. Um, I'd probably say top five movies of the year is definitely Ant Man's going to be in there, and probably in my top five Marvel movies made so far. Yeah, I mean it's it's definitely pretty good. I, to me, I think my favorite's Captain America: Winter Soldier. I think that one's just okay. <laughs> that one's my favorite so far. But Matt, yeah, you got I, a favorite Marvel movie? Well, like I said, I think I think my my top is Iron Man because yeah, yeah I it, was, agree. it was like the first one out yeah. the gate and it was really good. It was really good. And yeah. like Fred said, Winter Soldier yeah. and Guardians of the Galaxy, of the Galaxy and, and Ant Man was really good. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, and, and that's scary. I, I well, I was going to say like. I like the first Avengers, but it's not one of the greatest. It was well, a see, masterpiece. I really yeah. think the reason why the first Avengers worked so well is because it was like written to be like an Iron Man movie. Everybody had sharp little jokes and, you know, mm-hmm. like everybody acted like Tony Stark in that movie, basically. Yeah, it was uh, filled with uh, one-liners that yeah. got old after a while. You know, it's a good one that people forget about is the Incredible Heart Hulk with uh, Incredible, Heart? <laughs> Incredible Hulk. Incredible Hulk with uh, Edward Norton. Ed- Ed- I watched Norton. that the other night. That, that one's... Yeah. That one holds up. Well, yeah. actually, uh, uh, General Ross is going to be in... Uh, so the Red Hulk uh, might come around. Yeah, he's going to be in the uh, Civil War. Played by the same actor and all that. Well, yeah. Oh, I wanted Sam Elliott to come back. <laughs> Sam Elliott's <laughs> well, <laughs> big old great. bushy mustache. Yeah. <laughs> Sam Elliott's great, but yes, I, I give it, I'd give it an 8.0. I'd probably say it kicks. I'd, yeah. Kicks Terminator 3 out of the number 3 spot for top 3 movies of the year. So, Or Terminator, not Terminator 3, Terminator Genesis Jesus. out of the number the 1. only Terminator that matters. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> out of the number 3 spot for top 3 movies of the year so far. So far, so you have American Sniper, Jurassic World, Ant-Man. Yeah. So that's the first time we're positive across the board, <laughs> <Yes>. I think. <laughs> so yeah, go, I, go see Ant-Man. It's go. worth every penny. I mean... We even paid for the IMAX 3D, and I still think at 16 bucks it was still worth it. Yeah, the, the 3D like was that. actually pretty damn good for this one. Well, I, that's the whole. Even if the movie story stunk, I still probably would have wanted to see it in IMAX 3D because of all the shrinking and yeah, on shrinking they do. It's a the first good time I want to see shrinkage in 3D. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I, I, I give it. Yeah, it, it was it was a, definitely a good movie. So yeah, Matt, positive across the board. So if you guys want to. Know where you can catch any of our other episodes. Go ahead. You can find us on iTunes. We're also on Blueberry.com. You can read Fred's extensive <laughs> review <laughs> of Terminator. Terminator Genesis and the movies that we're going to see them again. Which one and is from coming? From here on out. One's coming for the Babadook. There is going to be an intense <laughs> review yeah, you, coming you for the like Babadook. It. Did you see it yet, Matt? The what? The Babadook. It's a horror movie. Oh, is it the thing that looks like uh, like some kind of Muppet? <laughs> like, yeah. I guess. Yeah. It looks like a Jim Henson creation it's, with a top hat. The kid in that movie is absolutely... You will never want to have children, ever. If you ever want... <laughs> well, there you go. Mini, yeah. mini review of the Babadook. Yeah. I just kept hoping that the Babadook was actually Jared from Subway coming to get the, oh, <laughs> get, coming to get the oh, kid. Oh, oh, oh. God damn it. Oh, <laughs> uh, well... <laughs> So yeah, that, that those those kind of reviews are invisible <laughs> moviemafia.wordpress.com. Yes. Um you can I, I stream all the episodes at grindedword.com. You can visit our Facebook pages respectively at mm-hmm. Facebook grindedword.com and Facebook miserablemoviemafia.com. 
end the contest. Do we even want to mention it anymore? <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> we have a contest going on. If you if you can get the, the person who gets the most people to like grind it uh you know our, our pages here and have them mention your name in the comments can win a free loot crate and a twenty five dollar gift certificate to get to the movie theater of your choosing. If you're like a certain someone who will remain nameless, who I may work with. <laughs> Nate's nameless, but I'm going to narrow it down. <laughs> who uh, is just pompous about it, and when you bring up the contest, they go, huh, I just don't like movies, I just don't like free things. <laughs> well then, go F yourself. <laughs> because, <laughs> because this is an excellent way to get free stuff. But like I was telling Matt, the person I work with, you could offer him a million dollars, and he would decline it because he didn't wouldn't want to pay taxes on the million dollars. <laughs> so But yeah, we're having a contest. Rules are on my uh, Facebook page if you're interested. Yes. So until next time guys, thank you all for listening and we'll catch you next time.